Hello everyone. Hi. Today we're going to look at a new LCC product from Logic Rail Technologies. Wow. Their Light EFX16. It's right in here in this box. We are going to do an unboxing. I really don't know what's the big deal about unboxing something. And we're going to look at its capabilities, how it interfaces, and um, see what it can do. Okay, here we go. Open this up. See what kind of goodies we have inside of here. There it is, the Light EFX 16. Looks like it comes with an Ethernet. Put it up here. I'm gonna assume that's a power connector of some sort. And the board. Okay, let's go through the different components here. We have a couple of LCC input jacks, network jacks, pretty conventional stuff. We have a power jack. Now it's worth mentioning that this board can be powered four different ways. You can either use DCC power brought into here. You can use LCC power from the LCC network. You can also self power it, bring it in here um, through self powering. And then for that, you actually have two options. You can bring it in to power the board, or you can also have this be a power producer, sort of like a PowerPoint for the LCC network. So it'll actually be able to produce up to 500 milliamps to each of the RJ45 output jacks. So it can become a PowerPoint too. That's kind of a nice thing, isn't it? I love These it. These jumpers here and here select what mode it will operate in. It's worthy noting that if you do use DCC, you cannot also tie it into the LCC network. So you have to select that. But basically by setting these jumpers, you decide what of one of those four modes you wanna do. DCC, LCC power, LCC power, um, also uh, feeding the LCC system, and then um, self-powered. So by setting up those jumpers, you can select that. Of course, then you have all your output connectors. This is one through eight down here. This is 9 through 16 up here, and if you look closely, you can see they are numbered um, next to each of the connectors, so you know what is what. Uh, then you have the blue and gold reset buttons. Hopefully we won't need those. And then you also have the option of um, more or less manually controlling this, not just through LCC, but you could use an input board. I think the, uh, the folks at Logic Rail Technologies has a... Um, a mating input board that you can connect to this basically allows logic level IO to um, control this or just lights uh, switches basically switches to turn on and off these different functions. If you look super close there's a little LED right here that tells the board is on. As we saw before there's the node ID they're unique typical of LCC networks and what else is there? It looks like that's about the high point. Overall, the board's very nicely laid out, very easy to get to. Um, everything's labeled very well. Very professional presentation. Okay, next, let's just take a look at the uh, Light EFX 16 manual. It's on the Logic Real Technologies website. I'm not going to read this 41 page document here, <laughs> but a couple highlights that I think are worth mentioning, but some things to keep in mind. Okay, on the features here, it does highlight the fact that you can go ahead and drive the LEDs without resistors. The current limiting resistors are on board, the actual board, which is great. You've got tons of lighting effects, and then later on it talks about uh, the different types, brightness effects. How this is triggered can be either through an external switch, DCC command, LCC event ID, or LCC fast clock time. Lots of good features there. Um, you can group together outputs for complex effects, and I'll get into that for like a traffic signal and so on. A lot of warnings about using a low quality power supply. Um, you should always be using regulated power supplies for any of your projects. Here we can look at all the different kinds of effects that are available. 
Um, some are pretty standard, straightforward, things that you've probably seen before, different kinds of fire blinking options. Kind of unique here is a fusee welding. You got two types of photographer flashes. It's kind of interesting. Mercury vapor lamp. If you ever remember those from back in the day, they would turn on, they would slowly ramp up. It takes about 20 seconds. You even have a good and bad fluorescent lamp. <laughs> That's kind of fun. Sputtering when the tube comes first on, and then another one that randomly flickers. I think I'll use that one. You got some random on off. That's kind of a neat idea. Um, bathroom light, rotary beacon, some emergency beacons. These traffic lights, you got both the US and the EU version. There's a little bit of a description later on here, which is kind of neat. Chase lights, if you want to put up a marquee around a, a building or something like that. Here's a section on traffic light behavior. Pretty typical North American, where you have both red for a few, uh, well, one second, and uh, then it cycles to the other direction. Interestingly, the EU version has this red, yellow combination, and then green, yellow, red, which is, of course, how it's standardized in Europe. Section here on how to connect to DCC, and it does have some warnings about how to make sure that you are providing the proper power to the board. As mentioned previously, there is an interface so that you could uh, provide hardwired inputs into your EFX16. This shows how that is wired in with a connector uh, there on the right side of the board. I think it's worth noting that if you are going to have manually uh, controlled switches, you have to configure that in the configuration settings so that the board understands that it's not going to use the LCC or DCC signals, but it's going to use manual inputs. And then finally, there's a section back here that shows how the blue and gold LEDs indicate uh, certain problems with the board, whether things are OK or if there is a uh, power problem, uh, maybe a firmware issue, it'll show on these gold and blue LEDs. OK. Now we're going to go actually open up the board in uh, JMRI and take a look at how it appears uh, when we want to configure it. Okay, I have connected the board to my LCC test setup. I'm going to go ahead and open up JMRI and uh, let's just see what this thing looks like when we get it um, on the LCC network. By the way, I really like using LCC for configuring the nodes. Um, you can get right in there and work it. If you look through the manual, you can see that there's ways of doing it through DCC commands, much like configuring a decoder. But boy, this is easy. And a quick disclaimer here, um, Logic Real Technologies never sent me this. I bought this on my own. Um, they did not contact me to try to promote this product. I just thought it was kind of neat to see somebody else putting out an LCC product. And I wanted to give it a try. So there's no connection, there's no kickbacks, there's no other incentives. Uh, this is just something I thought was pretty cool. So here you go, here's my demo layout. I've got a couple signal LCCs, I believe. And then I've got the new board here. Here's the LCC Light FX16. Open it up very much like uh, what you would see in, in, on any other node. Open up the configuration dialog. It's opening. And let's take a look at what we find in here. Identification, a little bit about the unit and the rev of the software, the firmware, I imagine. Um, moving on, segment device settings. You can give it a name. Um, if you have multiples of these, just like any other LCC device, you're probably going to want to adjust the name to make sense for where you're applying it. Uh huh. And where really the fun stuff starts is the actual configuration of the lights themselves, the outputs. Okay. So we've got our 16 lights, 1 through 16. Uh, right now it's got some default names. Oh, you know, and one more thing to keep in mind is before you start changing things, be sure to back it up. You want to go ahead and hit that backup button so that you can save this original configuration before you make changes and find out you got problems or something. Uh, I, this is really the cool stuff here. Upon receiving this event, the light will be activated, turn on. Upon receiving this event, the light will be deactivated, turn off. So here's where your LCC will transmit and receive information from the layout. 
and you can use that for whatever kind of effects you want to do. Um, some dimming here, it's right now set by default to 100, which is maximum. Um, here's where you can pull on your different uh, effects, right? So you got your fading, blinks, and so on. We saw that in the manual. Tons and tons of different options here. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, if you want to have multiple lights work together, you can link them. You can you either follow the previous or you click this and uh, you can make it as a standalone thing. Down here we have the DCC address, how it will behave for this particular light. So if I have DCC address 99, if it was connected to DCC, you could turn it off and on using that. An on-off timer, I think this is pretty cool. If you have a particular effect that you want to have trigger turn on, I'm thinking like a grade crossing, once it triggers, it stays on until that trigger goes away or if there's a timer that runs out. So that's kind of neat. By default, zero means that it'll uh, not uh, disable itself. This section here is for your input buttons. Again, remember that if you have the external input board, this defines how that behaved. And finally here at the, uh, I'll keep going here, extra commands. Uh, these are allowing you to set up light scenes, signal aspects that are triggered with a signal event, alternate events, or time-based activations of outputs. Okay. So some fun extensions of this. Maybe you want to have a little scene that goes off every so often that triggers multiple lights. You can do that down here. Some global settings. Uh, DCC configuration global settings. And then there's a LCC clock ID you know, which clock are you going to tie this thing to. I have not messed with uh, the clock side of LCC yet, um, but it looks like some pretty interesting stuff that you can do there. <laughs> so this is typical for each of the lights, right? So each of the lights will allow you to do this unique configuration on their, on their system there. And then let's go down to the last segment, measurements. It's a pretty uh, short section here shows the input voltage, my power supply right now, as I mentioned, I just tied it into the existing LCC network on my test setup. And uh, kind of a cool little thing here is the temperature of the processor in Celsius. So it's a toasty 30 degrees on the processor. So there you have it. Quick walkthrough through the uh, EFX 16 board from Logic Real Technologies. I'm excited about putting this into my layout. I've got some ideas in mind for different scenes I want to have it run keep you posted on that as it happens but there you go there's your first look at the board you know if you use them on your layout let me know in the comments section i'd love to hear about your your stories on how you used it anyway that's all for now and we'll catch you next time